Nevada's telegrammed Constitution scanned by the National Archives by Cairo Plaskon. For the first time, Nevada's battle-born Constitution, as Rush delivered by telegram to Washington, D.C. in 1864, has been scanned by the National Archives and is available for public view. It has little of the regal perfection we've come to expect in stately constitutions. It fluctuates from pompous, flowery penmanship to downright messy scribbles. But to be fair, everything was a little messy in 1864. America was at war. It was an election year, and Nevada sent its constitution over telegram as a formality to try and get the right to vote in the 11th hour. Now with this new detail of Nevada's telegrammed constitution, we have a chance to examine the messy details surrounding our state's battle birth, including presidential power used to influence the election, using the military for politics, slow mail, technology glitches, a lot of missing money in the mix, and even a little fake news. Sound familiar? It's an election year. mistakes on the telegram. Nevada's cream-colored telegrammed constitution shows the rush to admit Nevada to the Union in a way we've never seen before. It was translated to Morris Code and back to written words by many people across thousands of miles in many cities over two days, till it finally reached Washington, D.C., October 28, 1864. At first, the telegrapher is engaged in sweeping, artful penmanship, as if to say, This is a constitution, damn it! Soon their enthusiasm gives way to fatigued, meaningless, swirly swiggles. Words are illegible, inserted with carrots, smudged, crossed out, crammed to fit into corners, written so fast that punctuation's missing, and dashes miss the T's. A pen broke or spilled ink on page 107. On pages 110 and 111, words are curved down the side of the page. On page 112, words run together. There's even what looks like a doodle on a G on page 117. There are incorrect headings for articles, confusion about page numbers, and missing words here or there. It would be enough to put a frown on President Abraham Lincoln's notoriously ugly face. But all told, the 175-page document is surprisingly accurate when compared side-by-side side with the original Nevada Constitution. So, ugly as it is, frown or not, Nevada's telegrammed Constitution was good enough for Lincoln to proclaim Nevada fit to join the U.S. Club of States. It's probably the first example of a major political document being sent electronically, said University of Albany Associate Professor of History David Holschelder in an email. The telegraph was an early form of electronic data transfer, like binary code through a fiber optic cable today. Instead of binary code, though, the telegraph used Morse code, which was a series of long and short beeps. All technologies have errors, usually operator errors, and the more operators, the more errors. There were a lot of operators required to send Nevada's constitution by telegram. You can see it in the various handwriting styles. The Virginia Daily Union reported that operators rotated because it was so tiring. Explaining how a telegraph works, why it's so tiring, and why so many people were needed isn't all that easy for a layman like me. But here it goes, and I'll probably get some of it wrong. An operator sat with his finger on a button connected to a wire and tapped it in long and short beeps that represented a word or a letter. A guy at the other end of the wire who also knew Morse code in a city hundreds of miles away would listen intently and scribble down the words that he thought each beep meant. That's how the Nevada Constitution's 16,543 words traveled across the country. Nevada's constitutional telegram didn't really travel. It kind of skipped. 
Telegraph wires couldn't send the constitutional beeps all the way to Washington in just one shot. So the beeps were sent by a bunch of operators in Carson City to another bunch of operators in Salt Lake City, then another bunch of operators in Chicago, and then to another bunch of operators in Philadelphia. With so many bunches of operators listening to tens of thousands of beeps, translating and scribbling, there was a lot of room for error. In fact, the Virginia Daily Union reported that an operator could only last about three minutes listening to these beeps and tapping away and scribbling down before getting tired of listening to beeps and tapping and scribbling. Despite the number of operators and fatigue, there aren't that many errors. This big, messy constitution touched by so many hands that gave birth to the state is like a birthmark that makes Nevada different. Fake news. Nevada's constitutional telegram was the perfect opportunity to try out the art of fake news, which hadn't been perfected yet. It was the longest government document ever sent by telegram. The length was so unbelievable that people just made up stuff about it, and the news reported it. The Virginia Daily Union wrote that, quote, a critical friend at our elbow said the Constitution was just 15,000 words, and that it was impossible to transmit such a huge document to Washington, D.C., so that friend didn't believe the, quote, yarn or story. Fake news was a tactic used to get people talking about the fake thing so that people would be interested in reading the truth, which is much less interesting. Three days later, the Union ran another detailed story correcting the unnamed source and declared the sending of Nevada's Constitution by telegram, quote, the exact truth in all capital letters. using the military for political purposes. People are worried today that the military could be called in by the president to quell election unrest and somehow sway the election. Nevada's constitutional telegram adventure shows that the military can play a more subtle role in our elections. The military played an indirect role in the outcome of the election by suspending war communications just so that the Nevada constitutional document could be sent, and that would create a state and give two electoral votes to support the election of Lincoln. Presidential power to influence the election. Around the world, voters worry that leaders will use their power to stay in power. America is not immune, and Nevada's statehood is an example. Nevadans had voted to join the Union in 1864, but the president hadn't admitted us yet. Jeffrey Kintop, Nevada State Archives manager, wrote in 2009 that the national elections were part of the reason for the urgency of sending Nevada's constitution over the telegram. It was such a priority, Kintop wrote, that the U.S. War Department suspended all other telegrams at a time of war to get this document to the president so that Nevada could be declared a state. Nevada only had three delegates, so that wouldn't have had much of an impact on the results of the election. It's not clear who made the call to suspend war messages in a time of war to get Nevada's constitution, but if it was Lincoln pushing a territory through to statehood in the 11th hour of an election to get more votes, it could be seen as using presidential power to influence the outcome of an election. Mail delays and fraud. Americans who file absentee ballots and those who send regular ballots during the national pandemic worry that mail delays could stop their vote from being counted in time. Or even worse, the mail ballots might be the victim of fraud. Well, mail delivery and fraud were a problem in 1864, too. 
Nevada's territorial governor, James Nye, sent two actual copies of the Constitution by U.S. mail to Washington, D.C. America was at war, and there was a lot of opposition to the president's re-election and opposition to Nevada joining the Union. Quote, the opposition are seeking to make political capital against us on account of our non-admission, wrote territorial governor James Nye. Of the two copies sent by land and sea, only one made it to Washington. The one that made it and arrived almost two months after the election. And the other simply disappeared, which could have been the result of mail fraud. Once the telegram made it, Governor Nye demanded statehood in another telegram to the president's staff on October 29th. Have the president issue his proclamation admitting us as a state immediately. The money. At the end of Nevada's telegrammed constitution, it simply says paid $4,303. It doesn't indicate who paid. The cost of sending this document was estimated by the National Archives to be about $59,000 in today's money, which sounds like a lot for 175 pages to head across the country. But that's not entirely accurate. In 1864, the U.S. was using the gold standard. Every dollar was worth a little bit of gold. So the value of 1864 dollars is different from today's dollars. So to be fair, when looking at the cost of the telegram in today's dollars, we need to factor in the value of gold. That's apples to apples, gold to gold. So here we go. In 1864, $4,303 could buy 227 ounces of gold. In 2020, 227 ounces of gold is worth $398,362. Let me say that again. The telegram cost $398,000 to send in today's gold value. That's more than the average price of a house in the U.S., just to send 75 pages across the country. Now remember, the telegram was technically an electronic data transfer. The document, as scanned by the National Archives, is 138 megabytes. According to Amazon Web Services' API Gateway Calculator, it would cost absolutely nothing to electronically transfer 138 megabytes of data today. Not a penny. But in 1864, that data transfer cost the equivalent of $3,017 per megabyte. So Nevada's telegrammed constitution was really expensive. Our eyes are open now for the first time to the scribbly expensive thing, kind of messy in a pretty kind of way. It generated fake news, exposed a flawed mail system, and needed a little elbow grease from the president and military to get her done. From all this, something beautiful came. Nevada. Thank you.